Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Tom Spark and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out Viper VPN in an updated review for 2021, seeing where it places on the tier list with current options out there. We're going to help you decide if it's worth purchasing or if you should maybe go for a tier one option on VPNTierList.com. So stay tuned. We're going to check it out, run it through all the different categories, like if it has a good price, if the application is good, what kind of speeds you can get, if it works with streaming services, if it has a good reputation, and as well as if it has a friendly and responsive customer support. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and check it out. So guys, in terms of pricing, Viper VPN is one of those VPNs that really tries to get you to sign up for the long-term commitment to give you what I would consider a decent price because the one month model is pretty expensive at around $13 a month, which is comparable to something like ExpressVPN. However, for one year, it is a good price actually. $45 for 12 months is actually a really good deal. Only $5 more expensive than WeVPN, which I consider one of the cheapest VPNs out there, as long as, as well as something like TorGuard VPN. So this model is actually pretty good for the 12 month. I don't like the one month and the three year is also a good price however i would prefer the one month also to be affordable so people might not have to subscribe long term of course viper vpn wants it to be a longer term subscription to keep the customers longer so it makes sense from a business standpoint but from a customer who's not sure if you should use this one for long term it's not my favorite model um, at all. So there we go. We have a 30 day money back guarantee as well as doesn't show simultaneous connections on this page, which is kind of a bummer. Let's look that up. So it has five simultaneous device use, which is a little bit low. Nowadays, I'm looking for more like eight to 10 simultaneous device use. So that's a little bit of a letdown. We also don't see any cryptocurrency options here either. We have union pay, which is kind of like other stuff and PayPal and debit card options. So a little bit limited in terms of cryptocurrency payments as well, which is also a little bit of a letdown. Overall, it's not a bad pricing plan, especially for the 12 month plan. Um, but I just kind of wish that the one month was a more affordable. So there you go. Um, I don't really see any options for promo codes either. So I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to get a promo code from Viper VPN to make the price a little bit cheaper or affordable. But if I do happen to get one, or if it does get a good rating, I'll put it down in the comment or description down below in case you wanna buy Viper VPN if I do manage to get a code. But uh, it doesn't look like there's really any room for promo codes or anything like that which can be common with some other VPN providers out there. So guys, this is what Viper VPN's application looks like. And honestly, it's, I think, one of the best looking applications out there. They did a really good job with this, making it look clean and modern and just looks really good. The functionality is also quite good as well. You could favorite servers, sort them by speed, country, region, um, and you can connect to the fastest server as well. Not only that, but you see detailed statistics about the ping of each one. Honestly, this is one of my favorite um, applications in terms of design and what features you can see here just very easily and very quickly. They really did a good job with this one. The connection page is good too. And we do see some more things that I've been looking for that they weren't um, implementing last time. Nowadays, we have WireGuard, which is really nice to see. We also have Ike V2. Um, a chameleon anti-censorship protocol, which is something more like stealth VPN or obfuscated VPN use can help you unblock restrictions at school, workplaces, or strict kind of governments with specific firewalls. They even have open VPN as well, which is like the legacy older kind of protocol that isn't as used anymore um, alongside WireGuard, which is more popularly used nowadays. Ike V2 is also really nice too, because you can see um, because it just has those really, really fast connection times and it's good too. Um, OpenVPN is a little less harder to block um, than IKV2, sometimes a little bit trickier there. We can also see port options too, adding in manual ports, doing what you want, controlling it there, which is really nice for unblocking or throttling. So that's really cool to see. Not a ton of VPNs off, uh, offer that, but I do always look for it. We also see kill switch, which you can configure here. Let's turn that on. And it looks like you can deactivate the kill switch when the application quits. And we have system kill switch is active after application qu quits. So a good amount of controls here. We also see DNS customization, really nice. You could use Viper VPN's DNS or a third party DNS of your choice. We have automatic reconnect, which is just gonna make sure that it stays connected. And we have a little bit of options here with a tap adapter just to make sure everything's working um, correctly. We also have some minor startup options, which can be useful just to configure how it controls 
when it's on. We also have a public Wi-Fi option, which is good if you only want to use Viper VPN on specific untrusted networks or something like that. This is a feature I see more commonly offered on mobile devices, but it's interesting to see it offered here as well. So that's pretty cool. Let's put in an application analysis and see how it performs. So guys, I did a feature by feature breakdown in the application analysis, seeing where Viper VPN stacks up with other options and where it does miss out. Some of these things can be a little bit finicky to find exactly information on it. So this is why I do it. You don't have dedicated IP support with Viper VPN from the application. There's no ad blocking or split tunneling, which is a bit of a bummer because I consider those features pretty useful sometimes. However, it does have most stuff. It's lacking script support, but that's not a big deal. Um, unfortunately, it does not include a SOX 5 proxy, which is definitely a little bit of a letdown since that can be really useful as well. I'm not needing to use VPN for torrenting specifically. It doesn't have Linux GUI support, although it does have Linux CLI support. So depending on your needs there, weirdly enough, it also doesn't have like an extension for browsers. Um, but it does have an Amazon Fire Stick device um, support, which is nice. It does have a little bit more trackers than I would like, around four trackers, 11 permissions, which isn't horrible, and only one website tracker, which is like kind of like a Google font or something like that. So overall, it does pretty good. It gets a good amount of features here that I'm kind of surprised to see. However, some of the things that I would like to see are missing, specifically stuff like split tunneling, stocks by proxy, and ad blocking features. So depending on your use case, some of the stuff may not matter. Some of it might matter. Overall, not a bad application in terms of the features offered. Really good in terms of how it looks and feels. So guys, testing out WireGuard wire with Viper VPN on getting excellent speeds, pretty much top notch, five out of five, um, what I would expect nowadays with a modern VPN, with a lot of servers having WireGuard support. So one of my previous complaints with Viper VPN was that I was always slow. And now that is simply not the case. They've probably added more servers and the new implementation of WireGuard works really well. So we're getting around 60 to 70 range, which is excellent for my connection and no complaints here at all from me. So the good news here is that um, it does work with Netflix. As you can see here, my little test with the USA server, um, I am connected and you could see Twilight Zone right there. So really nice. I was having a little bit of issues before. I was connected to like OpenVPN and it wasn't really unblocking it. So I made sure to close down my br browser and I switched to WireGuard and now it does seem to be working. So it could have been a cache issue or something like that. Just keep that in mind. Um, you probably will have best results using WireGuard and it should work fine. Let's go ahead and test out some of the other services now. So checking out Hulu, we do see it is working and letting me watch the content, really nice. Now we're trying out Prime Video and it is also working. Really nice. Now we're testing out BBC iPlayer, seeing if it works. This looks pretty good. We are connected to UK London. And let's see if it works. It does seem to be working. There you go. Five out of five for streaming. Really good job, guys. So guys, what about Viper VPN's reputation and privacy policy? Overall, I think it has a pretty good uh, company and reputation. There hasn't been any history of giving out logs or anything like that. It's also one of the first companies who was publicly audited. Now, I don't think that is the end all be all kind of proof that they are trustworthy because other companies do audits as well. They just don't spend as much money to make them public or hiring other companies. Viper VPN it seems concerned about their reputation. And I think that in, in a lot of cases is a good thing, especially when there hasn't been any major security vulnerabilities or anything going on behind the scenes that is sketchy to me. I have inquired with Viper VPN management if they would like to join or can qualify to join the RVP system on my website. They haven't responded yet. So as of now, their score is just gonna be a four out of five since I can't verify completely. And they're not willing to say if they can um, adhere to the principles of my system, um, which other trusted VPNs can do on my channel. However, I have a good feeling that they might be interested in joining and I will be updating the score in the future if they do decide um, to join. So stay a lookout for that to see if the score gets updated, the comparison table, the tier list, and the transparency report. So guys, in conclusion, how does Viper VPN score? Well, very well. It actually scores tier one, which is really good for this company. Now in the past, they did get pretty good scores on the channel. There was a time when they were pretty close or around tier one range, but I didn't like some of the pricing changes they had made, as well as some speed decreases and stuff like that that I had observed. However, going into 2021 now, we do see some really good improvements with speed, like with the WireGuard protocol being added, really helps with speeds, as well as good stream compatibility, pretty good support, really good live chat, and ticket 
like your response times. Not only that, but I think the application is really polished and intuitive, easy to use, looks great, so much so that it gives it a little bit of a boost, even though it is missing some fundamental things like ad blocking, split tunneling, split uh, socks by proxy. Kind of depends on your use case though, so that's why I didn't give it a five out of five for the application, even though I do think it has one of the best looking and best feeling applications out there, bar none. The pricing, it does need to be cheaper per month, um, since it is expensive around $13. However, the yearly price is really good and long-term commitment plans with them are pretty good as well. And they are one of the companies I think I would trust to get a long-term subscription with, unlike some other companies that are always kind of changing up the pricing and stuff every month, it seems like, and adding additional stipulations to the pricing plans and you probably know which company i'm talking about anyways guys that's it for this viper vpn review if you want to help support the channel and you do decide you like viper vpn now go ahead and click on the link down in the description down below and i'll see you in the next vpn review very soon